Hey everyone. So Sarah here. Um, hopefully today's stream is going to be a little smoother than previous streams. Um, I am, uh, I've got a new webcam and um, I've changed over to a different streaming app. So hopefully OBS is going to treat me a little better than XSplit did. So we will see. Um, there is not anybody on right now, so I'm going to give it just a few minutes to see if anyone joins. Um, if not, then I'll just go ahead and get started and hopefully people will watch the VOD. Notice that today I am wearing my apron. Um, we are doing acrylic paints. In fact, it's a little, a little stuffy in here, but, um, <clears throat> We're doing acrylic painting, and as I mentioned in my first stream, it is messy, and um, there's not really a good way to clean it off once it dries. You can get little tiny spots off by taking a Q-tip and um, some acetone, like nail polish remover, and very, very gently dabbing at it. It takes a lot of elbow grease, so you have to work at it for a little while, but that is really the only way I know of getting rid of acrylic paint stains. Um, if it gets on something plastic, you can scrape it off um, some kind of surface, but it stains everything else. So I will say this, you I'm not putting paper down on my surface because um, I don't care if this surface gets paint on it, but generally, I would say that you probably want to put some kind of paper down, newspaper, newsprint, something underneath your canvas so that it doesn't get messy. So you don't, you don't get your table messy. So um, yep, that's it for right now. <laughs> um, I'll go ahead and talk about the supplies. So I've got different paints here and you can see I'm just using like little clips to keep the paint pushed down. But I've got Naphthol Crimson, which is our red. I'm using Cadmium Yellow Medium, which is my yellow. I am using uh, Thales, I always pronounce this wrong. It's Thalo Blue, but it's Thalo Cyanine blue is the full word, full term. Burnt umber and titanium white. So those are the colors I'm using. Generally, if you have a red, yellow, and a blue, and a brown and a white, you should be fine. So if you have just very basic acrylic paints, you can do this class. Now for my brushes, I've got two sizes and, and two types. Um, I've got, this is a flat brush, but it's rounded at the top. So it's called a filbert or, um, if you're using Grumbacher, it's called a wash brush. Um, this would be approximately a size 10 or 12 filbert. You could also use a flat brush. Um, or like I said, this is called a wash brush. So the other kind is a round brush. And that just means that it's pointy. Um, this is a size six and actually I thought this was a Grumbacher when I first introduced it, but this is a Princeton because I accidentally picked up one of my friend's paint brushes. So next time I stream a painting class, I will be using my Grumbacher cause I'm going to see her next week. So um, I'm going to get my brush back, but this is what happens when you have artist friends, you tend to get your stuff intermingled. Anyway, but this is a size six round brush. A size six or eight would be fine. If you go too much smaller than that, then you have trouble getting your lines thick enough. Um, you would be able to get finer lines, but the um, it, you would thicker is actually harder. Believe it or not, finer lines you can change the pressure of the brush. You know, you can pick it up straight or press down. You can see the difference in the pressure there. I have a palette knife and I just use a plastic palette knife, but you can also use like any plastic butter knife would be fine. Um, and of course there are fancier palette knives that are metal, 
I've got a palette and you can use either palette paper or a palette. Some people use a piece of glass, um, which are actually a little bit easier to clean sometimes. So that's not a problem. If you use a piece of glass or a piece of acrylic is what some professional painters use. Um, I have Liquitex matte medium. Let's see if I put this here so you guys can read it. This is matte medium. And this is what I'm going to use as a thinner to thin um, the paint when I paint. And then I realized that what I am missing is water. So I am going to give you guys a BRB screen and I'm going to go grab some water. got my water which is in a nice you guys probably can't see but it's a on, five nights at Freddy's cup and now I'm spilling on myself I, I spilled a little water on my canvas something to note is that when you do get water don't fill your cup all the way up because when you swish your brushes around in the water it can cause spills so okay I'm gonna go ahead and get started so today we are painting a snowy landscape. And in fact, I meant to post that, a picture of that in, on my Discord channel. Um, I'm going to give you guys a link to the Discord channel. I could find the program I want to open. Okay. All right. I'm going to actually upload today's reference image on the Discord channel so that you guys have that. Normally in the future this will already be done. Today I was running a little behind because um, I went to a church service this morning with a friend and we went to lunch after and uh, I don't know how it is in other countries but or at least maybe even other parts of the U.S. but in the South never try to go to any eating place right after church ends because it is packed and crazy and it takes forever to get your food so so needless to say I haven't even eaten really I've had a couple of french fries that was about it so don't be surprised if I nibble a little something here or there okay So what I'm doing now is I'm getting the picture, uh, the reference picture that we're going to be using today, the snowy landscape, and I'm going to be uploading that to my Discord channel that I just posted in chat. Now, for those of you who are watching this VOD, you should still be able to see the link in chat, but I don't know how that, I don't think you can click on it in VOD, so um, you'll just have to note the address but everybody is welcome it is a public channel you do not have to follow me to watch it so, all right almost there guys almost there 
landscapes. And I have a lot of lesson plans, so I have to dig a little to get this one. I tried to pick something that went with the season. Here we go. So I picked a snowy landscape, but I also had to pick something that I thought would be easier since this is my very first painting stream. So I chose this one. Um, let's see, snowy landscape um, for So I have uploaded it's processing and then you guys should be able to um, let's see. There we go. All right, so that's done. So now we can go ahead and get started. The first thing I want to mention is it is a landscape. And many of you probably already know this. Um, you see it a lot with printers, you know, portrait or landscape, which way. So portrait would be up and down. And this is because traditionally that's the, the direction, the orientation of a painting, a portrait painting. Landscape is generally side to side, and that's the orientation of a landscape painting. And the reason we do this is because uh, of the what's generating interest in the picture. So if you have it up and down and you do a portrait, you want to see the entire person's face and maybe a little bit of their neck. You know, you want to, that's what you want to see. So that's gonna take up most of the image. Versus a landscape, we are looking, you know, across a countryside or a lake or a river or in this case, we're looking at kind of a farm that's been covered in snow, and you want to see more of that um, from a width perspective. Because the sky, while possibly beautiful, is not generally that interesting. So you want to see more of the landscape. Um, that brings me to another point, is when you're choosing where to start your horizon line, don't choose just in the middle. Not only is that kind of boring and done, but it also, it doesn't ask anything from the viewer when you are choosing composition. And I talk about this a lot more in drawing classes, but right now in painting class, it, it is important for where we put our horizon lines. When you're trying to get the viewer to be interested in your painting, you want things to go off the side because then the viewer has to ask, well, where does it go? what happens to the rest of that flower that goes off of the page. Um, kind of like the other day we were doing the trees, the tree went off the page. That makes the viewer's mind, whether they consciously ask it or not, it makes the viewer question what happened to the rest of the tree? What happened to the rest of the landscape? That kind of thing. So you want things to go off of the page. Do you also want your horizon to not be directly in the center? It's the same thing with taking photos. And here's a little hint that has nothing to do with this class specifically. But if you're taking a picture, don't put whoever you're taking the picture of or whatever you're taking the picture of directly in the center. Put it off in one of the corners. That's called a rule of thirds. And that's an important element of design um, when you're dealing with space. So what we're going to do is our horizon is actually going, going to be at a slope today. And that is because, um, well, that's the way it is in the reference image, but that can create a lot of interest. However, the slope is going to be more towards the upper part of the picture because the sky is a lot less interesting than the ground. And how you decide where you want your horizon line to be is what's going on in the picture. If you, let's say you were doing a sailboat and the sailboat is, um, you know, and you're doing a beach and you can see the boat off in the distance maybe. You want your foreground, you would put your horizon higher up and so your sky would only be a small part, whereas your boat and your water and your shoreline and maybe some grasses and the dunes, all of that's going to be in the front because at the bottom because there's more to generate interest there. However, say you're doing a really gorgeous sunset 
and the ground itself is not eh, particularly interesting. Maybe there's a tree or something, but other than that, there's not really a whole lot going on. Then you might set your horizon line lower and make your sky the focal point. So it's all about what you want your viewer to focus on, what you want them to question in your painting or drawing. So, all right, let's go ahead and get started. First thing, we're going to be making a purple for our sky. So we are going to do a one to one ratio of red and blue. All right, and I'm gonna actually mix this off to the side. So when I start, um, Okay, how much paint to put down is always how much surface you're going to have to cover. In this particular case, we do have a little extra surface, so I would put probably equal to about toothpaste. Like if you were putting toothpaste on your toothbrush, that's about the amount that we want. Sometimes I'll say pea-sized. Um, I'm assuming you know that that's the size of a pea. In this case, we're, we're doing toothpaste, so it's going to be a little bit more. Okay. So I tried to put about the same amount, red and blue. All right, now I'm gonna get my palette knife and I'm just gonna start mixing these together. And I, I don't go too deep at first, like I don't go all the way down. Um, I start at the top and kind of mix the top and then once those colors get mixed, then I'll scrape the bottom of the paint to, to get whatever colors are down at the bottom. Now that's a very dark purple, deep purple. Every time I say that, it makes me think of the Smoke on the Water song. That'll be my theme song for whenever I'm mixing deep purple. Okay. Now I recommend, uh, depending on what color you're going to be mixing, um, you want to wipe your palette knife off right away. I'm not doing that because I'm gonna be taking some of this out and putting it to the side. And that's probably a little too much. Just a little scoop of it. We're gonna be mixing, there we go. We're gonna be mixing that um, to make lighter areas of the sky. Now I'm going to go ahead and wipe that off because again, like I said, once it dries on the plastic, you can't get it off, but it's annoying. So we won't think about that. Okay, now um, we're going to make a wash, meaning that we need to add a lot of water. So um, I'm gonna actually put some water in the center area and I'm going to pull, oh now that has a lot of blue in it, hmm. All right, so here's what we're gonna do. Blue is a very pervasive color, meaning that it kind of takes over everything. So I'm gonna actually add red by itself. And with my brush, it's going to muddy the color a little, so I'm gonna, it is gonna mess it up just a little bit. But I'm gonna pull just a little red into this because I want it to be a little more purple than that. See, this is what happens when it's really dark. It's very difficult to see. That is still really blue. So I'm just gonna take a, sometimes it's easier to mix with the brush once it's watery. All right, there we go. That's getting better. Okay, now that's probably a little too red, but I'm gonna pull some of this blue in. And this happens sometimes, you know, you don't get the exact color you want right away. All right. Well, we'll see. However it looks on the canvas, this is going to be serendipity. So here we go. So I made a wash, which means that it's, there's a lot of water in there. All right, we are going to kind of draw a diagonal line from left to right. We're gonna start right above the middle point, uh, maybe three quarters up, say that. I'll just put a little mark there. And we're going to go right below the middle point over here. So, just 
kind of angle that down. Now I try to do my sides and the reason is, is because to me that's interesting. Again, it makes the viewer look at the painting and kind of, oh, what? Oh, there's more paint around the other side. You know, there's more picture. But you do not have to. Um, and in fact, a lot of artists, what they do is they don't paint the sides. And eventually what they'll do is they go back and just paint like a black strip, almost like a frame, like a black strip. Or, or they'll pick a color that they really like from inside the painting and paint that as a color, like going around the outside edges. Um, and that kind of frames the painting. So that's something you can do if you don't want to do this. Also, if you're using a canvas board, you don't really have a side, so you don't have to worry about that. All right, so now what we're going to do is we are going to um, clean our brush. Now, when you clean your brush, this is important. You guys can't see this, so I'm gonna bring this to the middle. Okay, I, well, you still really can't see it. Hold on, let me clean it and then I'll show you. I'll show you with the clean brush. How about that? I brush the bottom of my cup as if I'm like trying to paint the bottom of the cup. That's how I clean my brush. And then so sometimes I'll wiggle it like that and then brush the bottom. Okay. That is how you properly clean your brush in a cup of water. So I'm brushing the bottom. That's the other reason why you don't really want a full cup. You want it to only be about halfway through. Okay, so I had a lot of paint on that brush. So I usually just kind of push it up against the side and get some of the extra off and then I will additionally wipe it. And see, I did still have some color on there. So I'm glad I got all of that. Okay. So we're going to take a um, our yellow. Let's see. Hmm. That was kind of tough to open. That is a little bigger than a pea, but not as much as a um, to, as toothpaste. Okay, so we are going to start with get some water on our brush. It's okay if there's a little color in the water. That's not going to really affect too much. It looks like it's going to. It looks like I'm putting a darker color in there, but I'm really not. This is where you can use the Liquitex um, instead of water to water. Just, Okay, so I'm gonna put some yellow right above that line that I just drew. Now, you wanna think about not mixing yellow and purple. The reason for that is because, here's a little color theory lesson for you. They are opposite colors on the color wheel, which is called complementary colors. And complementary colors, when mixed together, create brown. Now, yellow and purple mix to make a really beautiful golden brown, but we do not want brown in our sky. So we're not, um, and I mixed a little on the side. Okay, so starting off with yellow. Okay, now I'm going to just blend this upward. So blending upward just means I'm just taking my brush and I'm just pulling that up. And then I'm coming back and just, this is a dry brush. I don't have any paint on this brush. I'm just coming in here. Um, habit, force of habit, guys. I'm painting on the side of my canvas. Okay, so that blends that. Now... I'm going to start with my purple from the top and I feel like 
let's see how purple this is. That is still more more blue than I like. I'm just struggling with the. Normally, I mix colors really easily. That's kind of my thing. That's what I was known for in school. Other students would have me mix their colors for them because usually I'm really good at it. But and like if you wanted an exact color, like say you had a, um, a something you were trying to match. I was really good at color matching, but for some reason today, not so much. So I'm gonna go ahead and add a little bit of white, titanium white. Um, I'm just, so I left a little blank spot there. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna pick up a little white with my brush and just start brushing that in. And because that purple there wasn't dry yet, it mixed with it. And I'm just, basically as I get towards the top corner, I kind of just bring my pressure up. So it's not, not as much pressure. Okay. And that just blends it less. All right. Now I am going to paint the top here. It's just my thing, y'all. Got to do it. Okay, now this corner over here is darker, so I'm going to just dab a little bit of my dark color. But since I have white on there, it's not making it 100% dark. Oh, sorry, that was out of focus. Okay, well, it's a little better. Painting my sides. All right. Now I like to smooth everything out because that's the kind of painter that I am. Some people, I had one student who was um, getting paint on other parts of my canvas. Um, one of my students was really good at doing really choppy brush strokes and it looked amazing. I am not one of those people. I like everything to be smooth and smooth transition, smooth gradients. A gradient is when it moves from one color to another. All right, now the yellow should be mostly dry, so I'm painting the purple right up to that. But then we're gonna let that dry. Oh, let's get some more white. In fact, I'm gonna pick up quite a bit more white here. So I paint over that yellow area. So because the yellow is dry, I can paint over it. Otherwise, you would want to wait until it dried before you started painting. But that's the other reason why I didn't water it down with the matte medium, because matte medium makes it uh, not dry as quickly. So we would not have been able to do what we're doing right now if had I had I used the matte medium. It would not be dry yet. So it's very useful, but it's good to know your drying times. Now, I am going to rinse my brush off. And I'm essentially going to do the same thing with the yellow. I'll get a little bit more of like pure yellow on there, okay, just to get it wet again. Now I'm going to pick up some white. And smile while you paint. Painting is fun. All right, so that was not enough white. We'll just keep going and really get it down. And don't worry, this color that is down here, we are going to be using that as our ground. I, that was more just to draw the horizon line so we knew where it was. accidentally pulled a little bit of purple into that so I'm gonna just wipe my brush off I'm not cleaning it I'm just wiping it because it just wipes that the stuff that was right there on top now I'm going to actually put a little tiny bit of 
the matte medium, which doesn't want to open, into my white. And I usually just use the back of my brush and mix that up. Okay. And then just rinse your, uh, just take the paper towel and wipe the back of your brush off. Okay. So we're doing kind of a morning, winter morning sunrise. So um, if you don't have the Liquitex matte medium or any kind of matte medium for that matter, um, you would want to use um, just water, but you want to use clean water. That's important for this part because we are, it is white. Okay. So I'm picking some of that up. I'm coming in here. And I'm going to come right across the middle line where the purple and the white met. Now, the purple may still be a tiny bit wet. That is okay because what we're painting on here is white. And it's picking up some of the yellow. It's picking up some of the purple. It's not blending it necessarily to make brown because I'm using the white as my mixer. It's making it more gray. And gray we're okay with, gray morning. You know, that, that's not terrible. Okay. You can see why a lot of artists choose to just leave their sides alone because you have to keep remembering to paint them. Okay. I'm going to rinse my brush off a little bit. Let's see, I'm gonna get just a tad of water. Let's see, I'm picking up a tiny bit of purple. Yeah, I'm liking how this is looking. I, I left a little white streak in there, and that ends up looking kind of like a clown. Now, I haven't decided whether I want to blend that yet or not. I really like the sky right now. It is making me think of a country winter morning. All right, so I'm I'm just brushing my brush on paper towel just to get some extra stuff off. And I'm coming down here. I might pick up a little bit of yellow and a little bit of white. We'll be adding a little bit of sky accent later. So um, it doesn't have to be perfect right now. Right now we're just basic getting the basic sky down, but yeah, I like that. Okay, so for now, the sky is done. We're gonna move on. So wash your brush really, really well. And now we're going to do the ground. So remember that color we started with? That's gonna be our ground color. And notice because we used it in the sky, we're going to create a balance. So balance is something that's important in design. Um, if I use, say I had two different colors of blue and I did one in the sky and then I did a completely different color of blue down in the, the ground, um, it might not look terrible, but it would probably not look as organic. It wouldn't look as natural um, because the idea is that you want to create this balance where what is in one part of it is also in the other part. It's a, a principle of any kind of design, like interior design. Say you paint a room a certain color. In the room next to it, you might want to pull in some of that color somewhere in an accent piece, like a pillow or something like that. It creates, it's all about creating an experience for the viewer. All right, so I'm putting a little bit of water on my brush. What the water does is, I don't want a ton of water. I'm not putting it in like I was before, but what the water does is it just kind of lubricates everything so that um, we get that, uh, it'll move across the canvas. So we're doing the entire lower half. Now, I don't mind that this has a little more blue in it because this is eventually gonna end up being some of our shadow stuff like that. 
so I don't mind at all that it's not exactly that purple we were going for earlier. Still has the colors in there. Now notice I'm doing really broad strokes, but you could also, you could do short, little short little strokes. The only thing is, is that because of the fact that I added water to it, um, you're gonna see through it a little bit. All that means is that you'll have to go over it with one more coat. Okay. Man, now see, when I finish this, I could put this painting up just like this. I think it's really beautiful. I mean, of course, we're gonna be adding quite a bit more to it, but uh, I could definitely, just these colors are very soothing. To me, that's the magic of art, you know? <coughs> Excuse me. It's just very simple. The, the simplest things can really make you feel joy, you know? I think that's why a lot of people are attracted to abstract art. Because at first, when I was younger, I didn't get it. I didn't, I didn't get what people saw about, you know, these abstract art that didn't see it wasn't a picture of anything you know how could somebody like that now I get it is it because it creates a mood it creates an experience it's all about the experience right I think that's what life is all about it's all about the experience so make your experience a great one just like in your art all right almost done I'm painting my sides. Again, you don't have to paint your sides. And in fact, the color that I'm painting now would make a really great frame color if you wanted to go in and paint a dark color around later. The, the color that we're painting right now would make a very good one. such a rich color it definitely creates a feeling so just finishing up I'm gonna get this little side over here you see I'm just Trying to get this under the camera so you can see it. Just finishing that side. It's okay if you get a little on the back because you won't be seeing that when you hang it up. Um, however, like I mentioned earlier, just make sure you've got newspaper or something down that you don't care because this is the part at which point it gets paint on your surface, whatever you're painting on. All right, almost done. And we will have our ground done. So the next part we're going to work on, we're going to actually start painting in some of our figures. So in, in art, you've got figure and you've got ground. Now the ground is whatever your background is. And your figure is whatever is in front. And some, some of you may know um, some of those trick pictures where it looks like a vase from one perspective and then it looks like two faces looking at each other from another perspective. That is a trick of figure ground. Um, well, just the way our minds see it because if you see it as faces, then the face is the figure and whatever the other shape is, that negative shape is the ground. If you see it as a vase, then the vase is the figure and then the, the negative shape that some people see as faces would be the ground. So it's just a matter of how you see it. Then you have some masters like M.C. Escher who did what's called figure ground reversal where he had like birds flying this way, then birds flying this way, and then at some point you couldn't see exactly where it shifts. Then they look like one becomes the figure and one becomes the ground. 
it's very cool. I love that kind of optical illusion stuff. Um, I think a lot of people do, which is why, you know, that stuff is so popular. Okay, so I'm cleaning my brush. So now we have our sky and we have our ground here. So now we're going to start with our fence. So I'm letting it dry a little bit. I'm cleaning my brush. And in fact, this is probably a really good time to go get water and change my water out because I'm going to be doing lighter colors. So you guys hang right here. I'm going to give you guys a BRB screen so you can enjoy some very soothing music. And I will be right back. Okay, thank you for your patience. Hopefully you enjoyed that. It's not really music, it's more ambient sound. Um, it's from my favorite game. And I clipped it so that I could play it. It's probably, I'm sure that there's some copyright something or other, but it is what it is right now. Okay, so now we are going to make a brown. The brown is going to be for our fence. So let's do, we're going to use that mixture, the purple mixture we made before. We're just going to add a little bit of yellow to it. Remember how I said that the yellow, let's see, probably a little more than that, that yellow and purple make brown. Well, you guys are about to see. Now this might, because there was a lot of blue in it, it might end up looking a little green and we'll fix that. Because guess what mixes with green to make brown and that is looking pretty green red so your traditional tr Christmas colors of red and green actually mix together to make brown now the reason they're called complementary colors is because they do complement e each other that's why they are Christmas colors because they work very well together so it's nice to put those colors you'll notice a lot of school colors um, school mascot colors a lot of times are opposite. Um, and, and in fact, my school mascot, ECU, is purple and gold. Okay, so this is definitely more green than I want, so I'm adding in a little red. And still, I'm going to actually add quite a bit more red because it's still a little too green. But yes, uh, opposite colors look good together because they make each other pop. However, once you mix them, it ends up making kind of a grayish brown. Now, we could just use the brown that I already have because I've got the burnt umber. So, and we will be using that. Um, but the reason I am, that is still very army green here. So I'm going to mix even more red into it. The reason I'm using this is again, like I said earlier, we want it to have a more organic look. And so we're using all the colors. There we go. We're using all the colors that, um, uh, are already in our painting and it just makes it look more cohesive and organic because everything would be reflecting off of everything else. Now, um, I am going to pull a little bit more yellow into this. Let's see. 
That's just going to lighten it up a little bit more. So chat's pretty quiet today. I guess that's good. That gives me plenty of time to just do my thing with instruction. But if anybody has any questions, please do not hesitate to ask. I do have my chat screen up on my other my other monitor. Okay. So this is not exactly the brown that I would like. I feel like it's still a little army green. So I'm going to actually just inject some red paint directly into it. I don't normally recommend doing this. I don't recommend um, putting the color straight into it. But I'm running out of red in the other spot. So I'm doing that. Now this is just about a pea size amount. But... Uh, it got elongated so it looks like it's more but it's really just about a pea size and the reason it's taking more red is because I'm getting more and more of the paint so the, the bigger the glob of paint that you've got to mix the the more color it requires to mix it so I'm needing more red because I was adding so much to it this is a pretty good brown I'm, I'm pretty happy with that brown. So um, I've got a new paper towel. I'm going to wipe off my uh, palette knife. All right. Now we are going to use our round brush. So go ahead and get it wet. And I did get some clean water here. Go ahead and get it wet. After you wet it, so again, when you're wetting it for the first time, you brush the bottom. And by the way, this is what it looks like when I'm cleaning the brush. You can kind of see it now. Anyway, you want to wipe it off the side just a little bit. It'll still be wet, which is okay. And we are going to pick up a little bit of our brown. Now, I like to come in from the side because your brush has water on it. So if you put it directly into the middle, it just becomes like you end up just getting too much paint on the brush itself and we don't want to load the paint on the brush because then it gets up into the bristles and up into this part here which I can never remember the name of okay now what we're gonna do is we are going to start at the top horizon line edge uh, just left of the center so this is about the center here so we're gonna start just left of the center okay and we're going to paint two lines starting with that edge. Now, it's going to be coming down. Now the two lines are going to pretty much blend together. So you won't see them right away. Um, now we're going to do two more. It's going to start to create a curve. Um, let's see. Let me see. I know we started at the top but I feel like, no, we're okay, okay. But these are gonna start curving towards us. You see, so I'm doing two lines because these are the different sections of the, the uh, fence. All right. I almost thought about us changing direction and starting from the bottom, but I, I changed my mind. I'm gonna stick with stick with what I was doing. All right. All right, now these are coming off of the page. Remember that creates interest. Another thing this does is it creates movement um, because when we follow a line out of a picture, it, it makes us feel like we're going somewhere. So that's another element of design is movement. And lines have a very strong way of doing that. The nature of your lines definitely influences the feel of your painting. Now, we started with two lines, 
but we're going to actually do three down here because as it gets closer to us, we can actually see the different the individual fence rails, whereas when it's farther away, we don't. So this is an element of design called space. We're creating the idea that this is going off in a certain direction and, and it creates, uh, it makes it look 3D, which is space. So I'm drawing this third line. And the pressure of your brush is not too terribly important. Now this is going, they get closer together and they also get smaller. So now the pressure of your brush starts to become important. You want it to be lighter. You don't want to press down as much and this will give you a thinner line. Okay. Um, now we're going to do just one more line. Let's see, where do I want to put this? I feel like maybe I started this a little too low, so we'll just throw it in here. It's okay if they're a little closer together right now because we're going to be coming in and putting our snow in the middle. So mine goes off right at the corner of my page. So this is a case where it's okay if you mess up a little and where the placement because we're going to be painting over it. Now the thicker the lines you make, the longer it takes to dry. So I'm trying to smooth mine out so they're not too thick. Okay, now we want to make our actual fence posts. All right, so we've got one that's gonna be pretty close to us right here. And it just starts at that top one and comes straight down. We'll do another one, just a little section away. Now this is doing two things. It's going away from us and it's also curving away from us. So these are going to get closer together. That's the, the nature. They're going to get closer together and then they're going to start coming on the other side because it's curving. That you won't be able to see as much in this painting. But right about here is where we stop seeing so really out towards you don't even see the the lines but here is where we stop seeing it on the right side and we start seeing them on the left side of course it's so close together at that point that you don't uh, you don't see it okay so let's go ahead and rinse our brush So we need this to dry a little bit, but I do want to go ahead and start on my snow. All right. If you guys will excuse me, I'm going to take just a little bite of my sandwich because I am very hungry. I got this a Cuban sandwich from an awesome place called Gordo's. Thank you. That needed to happen. All right. So while um, all of this is drying, we're going to start mixing our uh, snow color. So if you have any little bit of that purple left, I know we used it for the brown, but I have, remember how I had us put some in a different section? There's a reason for that. 
Now we're going to mix our snow color. So it's going to be a lot of white with just a tiny bit of purple. Oh, hey, I've got a question in chat. The page is a little low down on the stream. Can you move it up or tilt the camera? Let's see. Does that help any? Let me know if that helped. Awesome, thank you and thanks for the tip. Okay, so we are going to be mixing our uh, snow color. So it's four parts, four, four, I don't know which camera, <laughs> four parts white to one part of our purple that we mixed. So I'm not using the original white, I'm gonna keep some pure white. This I'm gonna mix in the middle because we're gonna use a lot of this color. So. What I do when it needs to be a part of something, I just kind of in my mind think like there's a sound effect that goes with it. It's like, ch -ch -ch -ch. <laughs> so I did that four times. And then when I put the purple in, I'm just going to go ch one time. Hey, it's not scientific, but it works. In this case, because it, I'm not squeezing that out of a tube, I'm just guessing at the amount. So here I'll show you. So I'm guessing that this is about, here's the white here. It's harder to see. And I'm going to mix this in. So this gives us a very, very mild, in this case, kind of a blue color, because remember, ours was a little more blue than purple earlier, which turned out OK. I like that. OK. So I'm going to wipe off my palette knife. And um, to this, I am going to actually add a little bit of my matte medium. And remember, if you don't have matte medium, you just put just a tiny bit of water. But remember, I'm going to use the back of my brush to mix that in. You could use your palette knife too. You don't have to just use the back of the brush. The main reason why I do that is just because it's such a small point that I don't get it everywhere. Okay. And I can kind of spin it to get most of the excess paint off. All right. So first we are going to paint in the uh, dark area. And you know what I'm going to do? That is very difficult to see, I, I feel, because it's against a black table. So I'm going to put a couple of white paper towels underneath this so maybe it'll make it easier to see for you guys. Let's see if that helps. One more, one more at the top. Oh, I guess there was two more there. Good, see, always thinking, I'm always using my noggin. <laughs> Apparently not at the beginning, but towards the middle. Okay, so that gives you guys, it makes it probably a little easier to see. All right. So now we are going to take a, our large brush that should be clean now um, because you cleaned it. And we are going to take some of that snowy blue that we made. The reason I'm pausing is because I'm thinking maybe, you know what? No, actually let's stay with this color. I was thinking maybe we want a little more white on this, but I don't think so. I think this is gonna be like our underpainting. So we are going to use the color that's here and then we'll go in and make that a little bit lighter with some white here and a little bit for highlights because um, we're also going to make a shadow color. All right, so uh, I meant to wet my brush just a little bit and you pull in from the side. Again, see how I'm not going right into the middle of it. 
I'm pulling it in from the side. Okay, now I don't need too much water on this because we used our matte medium. And we already mixed some water in. Um, all right, so first things first, I'm just going to, before we start painting this, I want you to know that there are going to be shadows that are going to be created from our negative space. And what negative space is, is basically anywhere that the paint is not, that's the negative space. So wherever I paint this new light blue color is the, the figure. And then the ground, the negative space, is um, where I don't paint, where I'm not painting this blue color. So we're gonna leave some areas, the dark blue that I already have on the canvas and that will be our shadows. Sometimes you can paint the shadows directly on with the color. In this case, we're doing, we're leaving it behind. So I'm just painting this color. I'm gonna go all the way up to the horizon. Now this, you can definitely be more jagged with your brush strokes. You do not have to be um, as precise. And you want to go right up to the fence, but we're going to come in there later with a smaller brush so you don't have to get super close to it. Now, I don't know if this is creating any sound, but I've got a water cooler next to my desk, so I'm just going to turn that off because it's very loud to me. Wow, now it feels completely silent now that I turned that off. I don't, my mic is good enough where it probably won't pick up any ambient noise, but I can hear it and it was a little distracting to me. So I've got my gain turned all the way down. So, okay. So here I'm just going to kind of come down with the, the color, but I'm not getting too close yet because we're going to be adding our shadows as we get closer to the fence. Okay. So this is the tricky part, the tricky bit. All right, so I'm gonna leave a little shadow here and I'm letting my brush kind of uh, like squiggle. I'm just letting it squiggle so it gives like a natural shape. And some of these might be shadows from other things too. Uh, let's see. Picking up a little bit more color. Again, come from the side. Never dip your brush directly into the middle of the paint. All right, here. How do I want to do this? Get another one going. And then maybe... I'm going to do some short, short brush strokes. Now I'm really getting focused on the painting. So heads up that I might get quiet for a minute while I'm thinking about where I want to go next. This is the best part of the painting process to me is the, the part at which you just make the decision, you know, the decision of where to go what to do next. Okay. So I'm doing another one coming around. This one's going to be a little longer and thinner. And what I'm doing is I'm painting one way and then I'm turning around and from the other side painting the other way. That way I don't get the, the choppy brush strokes on one side. So you get smooth brush strokes. That's the other reason why we use the filbert. You can use a flat brush, but it's the filbert's nice because then you get the rounded edges. All right, so let's see. Is there anyone on the stream that um, watched John's stream last night and followed it all the way to the end? So I had to jump off early. I had a lot going on this morning, so I could not stay up so late. 
All right, well, you can already see a picture starting to take form and see how even though I'm doing, I'm painting the foreground, it's already starting to look like shadows in the background. So I'm gonna come on the other side and start painting. Gotta get that side. Well, I wasn't enjoying the game too much. I, I have already made the decision that I can't take any more Tarkov. Sorry for any of you watching that enjoy that game. Maybe it's different when you're playing it, but watching it is not fun for, for this gal right here. <laughs> it's just boring. Mostly you're watching load screens in my opinion. <laughs> that's a great comment Philip just made a comment about uh the shadows you know give a lot of life to the meaning and to the painting um it does every every time you add like a little something here a little something there each layer adds more life it was kind of like the trees the other day you know you know the, the every time we add a new layer it just makes it come alive and just look really real That was a good point, and thank you. So now I've got to start thinking about my sh shadows from the other side because the shadows aren't going to be from the fence. They're going to be from snow banks. You know, they're going to be areas. Now you're talking to someone who has grown up in the southern region of the United States her entire life. I've not been around very much snow. In fact, growing up from the time I was zero to 18 years old, it snowed a total of four times in my hometown, four. So <laughs> for those of you living up north who are probably laughing at me right now, I, I, I know the sun much better than I know the snow. So... So this is all not experiential for me. This is all from looking at pictures. <laughs> Four times, yes. And every time I was incredibly happy. And let me tell you, when I was a little girl, I was barely um, able to even walk on my own. It actually snowed from my first memory. I want to say I was maybe 18 months or so. Um, I went out and I built a snow woman. Yes, I did. I don't even know what in my brain told me that I wanted my snowman to, you know, look female, but I did. So I was a feminist even then, y'all. <laughs> I'm not really a feminist. A human rightsist. Does that work? Does that, is that a thing? I'm a humanist. I guess that is a thing, but I, I don't think that's what that means. I feel like that was like some kind of philosophical movement, humanism. All right, so I'm starting to get to the point where I'm not sure what I'm doing here. <laughs> I'm just leaving shadows where they look like I should leave a shadow, snow banks. Um, we can always come in here with a smaller brush and, and do highlights later. Because uh, we are going to be doing using our small, smaller brush for the um, inside the fence posts. What makes the summers great? Being up north? Oh, yeah, higher latitudes, yes. Yeah, it's pretty beautiful. Um, a lot of my family is in Chicago, so... It is really nice summer. Summer's up there. But boy, those winters. Whew. Maybe if you're used to it, it's not a big deal. I remember going to visit some family. I've got some family in Iowa too. And um, I remember seeing people get out of their cars in t-shirt and shorts in the middle of winter. And it, it was really cold. It was like below freezing. Um, but I guess the point was they all had garages. And they only had to go from their car to the store back to their car like that was the only time they were exposing themselves to the cold so it was a thing y'all I don't know I still have to wear my coat 
Okay. So, um, I need to do something right here. Let me see if you guys can see that. I need to do something right here. And I'm, I've been deciding what to do because this is going to be my fence post reflection or uh, rather shadow. So I'm thinking I might bring these in a little bit farther. I forgot that I need to make these a little shaky. And then, hmm, here I can probably make some. So I'm just using the very, the very edge of my brush. And so even if you need to push it down and flatten it a little bit, you can do that. So it gives you like a flatter surface. Yeah, that's true. By the equator, there isn't any variety. Although, I don't know. If I lived like in Hawaii or something like that, I probably wouldn't complain that much about being sunny and nice all the time. I might complain about the really high prices of everything. Because <laughs> you got to ship everything there. It's one of the things from back in my Lowe's life, you know, I was a pricing analyst. <clears throat> and so that was one of the things we did is we, we had to put an increase on anything that went to Hawaii or Alaska because, you know, it just costs so much to ship everything there. So they're paying a good 10, 20% more. So, um, and notice these are smaller. They're getting chunkier as we get close. I hope that's the right number because that would look really off if I didn't have the right number of posts. Top. Second, third, fourth, yeah, because we're going to be doing some under here. <laughs> so count your post, guys. Okay, I'm going off the side a little bit. And in fact, I'm going to come down just a little bit here. Wouldn't that be funny, though? Have like three openings and, or, or yeah, three openings and four, four shadows or something crazy like that. That'd be good for one of those tests, you know, the, the kind of IQ type stuff where they say, look at, um, you know, tell, tell me what's missing or tell me what's different, you know, that kind of stuff. That'd be fun. Be fun to make one of those. All right. And a little bit up here. So these are supposed to be snowbanks, so you know they don't they don't have to be perfect. I kind of made mine. No, I wouldn't say perfect, but I made mine like where they're. They they can be a little closer together. And what I'm doing is I'm using my brush in such a light way that the stroke comes across. It's something called a fan. I call it flirting with the canvas. So I'm letting my brush flirt with the canvas, just kind of lightly going against it. Okay, so I'm going to wash this brush. Now again, back and forth, back and forth. I'm painting the bottom of my cup. You can go more vigorously or you can go slow. It really doesn't matter as long as you're painting and I'll sometimes change direction and go side to side, back and forth. Either way, that's what gets your brush clean. And so then we're gonna just dry it and we're done with that brush for a little while. Now we're gonna pick up our round brush, round. My, my paper towels are going askew here. View askew. A production company. I don't remember whose production company. Kevin Smith, maybe? I'm not sure. Okay. So I'm getting a little water on my brush, just a little, and I'm wiping off any excess on the edge there. And then picking up from the side, again, remember from the side, 
picking up some of that light blue color. Now I'm going to come in and I'm going to paint directly inside the um, fence posts. Now, remember earlier I drew, I painted my fence post a little bit farther down than I wanted. So this is where I can fix that. Look at that. It's like it never happened. The magic of acrylics, y'all. See, you can't do that with watercolor. That's why we have to plan with watercolor. Acrylics, you just paint right over it. So I'm just using very light pressure with my brush. That way I can determine exactly how bit wide I want my line to be. <laughs> okay. All right. You know, I like painting nature scenes, but it's so funny because I'll see something in real life, you know, a beautiful nature scene, and I'll think, oh, wow, that looks just like such and such painting. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I would say the painting looks like the nature, Sarah. Very quiet, so quiet. All right. So right now I'm, I'm not painting the bottom at all yet. I'm still just painting inside, so I'm not gonna touch down here below. We're gonna do that. Um, well, good, I'm glad I'm not alone. <laughs> Thank you, Philip. You made me feel less, less crazy. <laughs> and I'm not the only one that thinks that art, that life imitates art sometimes. So now I'm being a little more haphazard about the lines. I'm not trying to be as precise. I'm still trying to be somewhat thin, but it's okay because the more choppy it looks, it kind of gives it a more interesting, um, mm, I can't think of the word, but look, I guess, design. Okay, now here, I'm gonna start not, not even really filling everything in. So like I barely let, that. I did a little flirting with the canvas, I just let it barely touch. Uh, I mean, I'm touching like, so it has a point on it. I'm putting such light pressure that only the point is actually what's touching the canvas. And that's how you get these tiny, tiny little lines. Oh, yes, and I have actually, I have played through The Witness uh, almost four times. I've played all the way through, cannot do the challenge because speed is just not my thing, <laughs> apparently. Um, so I can't do the challenge at the end, but I've played the rest of the game, including all of the other puzzles, anything environmental, all that stuff, three times. Um, and my fourth time, I'm almost at the end. I'm not going to give too much away because I don't want to make any spoilers. But if you know the room that happens to be my BRB music, my BRB ambient sound, if you happen to know that room, I save that room and just do one puzzle at a time and I use that room for when I need to be chill. Um, so I will go into, because playing games actually can chill me out a little bit. So um, I will go into that room, like I, I don't finish those puzzles right away. And I go into that room and just kind of like chill out, maybe work on one puzzle, chill out a little more and then leave. And don't, I don't do a second puzzle. So I save that room for as long as I possibly can. I savor it. It is my favorite place. And I actually found a real place in the world, in our IRL world, um, that looks so much like it. 
it's down in I think South or Central America. Anyway, I'll find that out and I'll post it in the the Discord um, channel. But there is a real place that looks just like that, and I'm going there and I'm gonna dive because I'm a diver. Oh yeah, another thing that I do, I scuba dive. Huh? She does it all. Okay, so now I'm going to work on this. You haven't gotten to it? Okay, so, all right, well then I definitely won't give it away. I don't, just in case, I don't wanna give it away. Okay, so I'm doing, now I'm putting my shadows in the snow here, and I'm just gonna put a couple, and then I'm just gonna brush some areas on, cause, um, I'm just giving some vertical areas to my those horizontal lines. Uh, let's see. What do I want to do here? This is not looking as this is looking less choppy than I like. Oh, maybe because I haven't done the bottom yet. Okay, okay. Let's do the bottom. Let's do the bottom opening. So we're gonna paint like we were painting up in here, like we were painting up in the fence. We're going to paint the bottom the same way. We're going to pretend as if it's a fence post rather than the shadow on the ground. Because really it is. It's an opening between the ground and the post. So there, I'm just getting kind of farther away and I'm just kind of letting, letting my brush do its thing. All right. These posts are really wide, so I'm gonna I'm gonna bring my um, snow spots closer together. Sorry, that took a long time to finish that sentence, huh? Okay. All right, so one more spot down here. Let me tell you guys about the witness. If there were a cult that was based around the witness, I'd either be the leader or I'd be like, you know, good friends with the leader. <laughs> I love that game so much. So, so much. It's just, it's, it's like, I don't know, there's something peaceful and relaxing and amazing about it. And, you know, it, um, I like how it teaches. I like how it forces you to look at um look at things from a different perspective it's just it's a cool game man it's a cool game and i haven't seen anything like it yet all right closest thing that i, I enjoy playing that's like that i really like talos principle i'm not sure if i'm pronouncing that correctly talos talos um that's pretty good too but it, it doesn't have like the the directness that the witness has. The, the witness, there are no accidents. If you see something and it looks out of place, it, it is part of the game. Whereas in Talos Principle, there are Easter eggs. There's plenty of Easter eggs, but there's a lot of randomness in it too, where you know you can go for a while, you can run around um, the game field and and not see anything. There's not, it's not the same. But the puzzles are just as fun. Okay, so I've got my snowy field now. Um, so now what we're going to do is we're going to add a little bit more white. Now here's where I've washed my brush and I'm going to pick up some of this white. I'm going to get a little water on there. I'm going to pick up some of the white we made before that we mixed either water or the matte medium in. And um, let's see, this should... This might not be wet in areas. So I'm also going to pick up just a little bit of the blue. So I just dipped my brush right into the side of the blue and picked it up. So now on my brush, I don't know if you can see, that's probably hard to see, but I've got blue on one side and white on the other. So what that's going to do is it's going to blend it together once I start painting that on. So um, up at the top here, closer to the sky, See how that mixed that together and it made it like a light blue, an even lighter blue? So closer to the sky, we've got that. This is where we're going to come in and we're going to paint right up against the, the line there with our small brush. Because this is like a snow bed. 
snow bank, snow bed, you know, something like that. So I'm just doing very broad strokes for the rest of it, other than this space here. Just to wipe it. It's almost like the flirting that I was talking about earlier. It's almost like that because I'm, I'm barely touching it. But this is a technique called dry brushing. This actually, the flirting is what I call the, uh, that technique I was talking about before where you just barely um, touch, like feather the, the canvas. This actually has a real technical term that I did not make up, and that is called dry brushing. And that's where you take your paint without any water on it, and you just let it grab the, um, the canvas has like little teeth in it, and you let the teeth grab that so then you don't get a smooth, um, a smooth painting surface. You actually, I, I wish you could see this. I don't know. I don't know if my camera will focus like that. No, you really can't. Sorry, guys. <laughs> you just have to trust me on it. You'll see. You'll know it when you see it. Um, okay, so I'm picking up a little white, a little blue, and I'm coming in, and I'm just going to do a little on the top. This is the stuff you're going to notice. This is Bob Ross style right here. Just a little on the top. A little white. A little blue. Um, now we're going to do our horizontal. Now I'm not painting a lot on there, just a little. A little white, little blue. It's going to be my mantra, like the rest of this painting. Just kidding. We will actually delve out. Now here, um, I'm going to put a little bit more white. So this time it's just white, um, right here. Cause I feel like, and this is partly, this is coming from the reference image, but, um, you know, maybe we just have this kind of stream of sunlight that's just really hit this area here more than anything else. I'm cleaning off my brush because I see something that I want to fix. I'm picking up a little bit of my blue mixture from before. I want to fix this right up against this fence line here. I don't know why, but that is bothering me. It doesn't, it doesn't look natural for some reason. So I'm just fixing that. And I don't know what's going on there, but we're going to fix that too. Okay. All right. Feel better. We're good. We're good. Okay. A little white, a little blue back to the mantra. All right. So, uh, let's see. We'll do, I'm just going to do a squiggle. So just a, that's the technical term. It's also the sound the brush makes. Now this is blending the blue together. So there's not as much white there. Oop, that time I did a little blue and a little white. Changing it up, y'all. I'm changing it up. It's getting really exciting here now. Okay. Right now, I'm needing a little bit of water. So I'm actually, I got a little water on my brush, and I'm just putting it directly. I didn't get too much, so, so it wouldn't be running, but I'm putting it directly on my um, canvas because it, I didn't want the dry brushing in that particular place. And that's all you have to do to fix dry brushing. If you don't want dry brushing, just add water. Just add water. Isn't there like some little creature that they sell now at the store, Hatchimals or something? You just put them in water? I don't know. Maybe not. Something. I feel like there's something that you can just add water to and it grows. Shows you, I keep up with kids' games, but I don't keep up with kids' toys. All right, let's see. Where else do we want to put some white? I guess we need to add more over here. So getting white and blue. I'm going to add a little bit of water to that. Maybe even a little bit more.
Okay, get a little more, a little more. Come over here. So I'm trying to touch all of the parts that were blue before. I'm trying to at least touch them a little bit with the white or the, the lighter blue, rather. Okay. A little white, a little blue. And we're gonna come in right here with a little water. Now, I'm allowing there to be a little bit more white as I get closer to the horizon because that's where um, in fact, that time I didn't even get any blue. I am going to get some water, though. Uh, and I'm going to let it get a lot lighter as it gets closer to the horizon because that's where our light source is. Our sun is coming up over the horizon. And that makes everything bright. Okay, now, um, where am I missing? Oh, I think I'm going to do a little bit more white too um, on the other side where I had I had uh, let the dry brushing happen. I think I'm going to do some straight white there. We're actually doing pretty good on time. I didn't check to see, but we probably could take a little break. So after we get the snowy ground done, we're gonna take just a little breathing break. Also, for Sarah's case, it's gonna be a Cuban sandwich break. Because I'm hungry. I didn't even eat breakfast today, which is terrible, I know. Like, What kind of personal trainer are you? You don't even eat breakfast. I didn't get my workout in today either, so you can go ahead and judge me for that. <laughs> okay, um, last thing I want to do here with this white mixture is uh, This is good. I'm, I'm pretty happy with this. But I do feel like there, we didn't hit the um, inside of these very much. So I need to come and do that. So we'll do the little blue, little white. And I'm just hitting it on that right side. Again, I'm not entirely sure why the reference image only has it here. I'm going to assume that the person who painted the reference image knows what snow looks like better than I know what snow looks like. And so I'm trusting them. Maybe I need to spend more time in snowy landscapes, getting to know the landscapes. By the way, y'all, this is, uh, and if you follow me on Twitter, I'm going to be posting this probably later today, but I am on a kick right now of getting to know things by talking to them. Um, even if it seems silly, like going and talking to a tree or talking to yourself in the mirror. But um, talking, you know, we are a communicative um, species, right? You know, some of us may be more communicative than others, but um, we are a communicative species. So I think it's really important that um, we, when we talk to things that are inanimate, in some way, you know, like a tree or yourself, because sort of you're inanimate. I mean, you're talking to something that's not, I mean, I don't know. It, it seem it does seem a little weird, but, um, you get to know it better because that's the nature of language. So that's like my new kick today. It's talking to inanimate objects. I'm sure whoever sees me probably thinks I'm a kook, but they might have, might have thought I was a kook before anyway, so, you know. Um, okay, so to answer the question, this is sort of a new color. We're still just working with the white and the light blue. All right, 
But we are done with that. We're done with the white and the light blue. And we are going to take a very brief break. Um, I would like everyone, we're going to just do a, a, a nice big sun salutation from our chair. So we're so what you do is you take your arms and you bring them all the way up above your head. Big deep breath. And then when you breathe out, you just bring your hands down to your heart. Okay, we're going to do that three times. Here we go. Three more times. One. Breathe out. Hands to your heart. Number two, breathe out, hands to your heart. Last time, so nice, so nice. All right, I feel all stretched out. I didn't take my Cuban sandwich break. I will have a French fry break though. <laughs> all right. So let's see next we're going to actually add a little bit of shadow. Um, even though we already have dark in our, in our, um, snowy patch area, we're going to add just a tiny bit of a gray mixture just to create some different values. All right. So what we're going to do I'm going to actually use my big brush for this. So we're going to use the, the big flat brush. All right. Um, I'm going to take just a tad of that purple that we made earlier and mix it in. Well, when I said tad, I needed more than a tad, apparently just a little bit. And then let's see, what do I want to add? Let's add a tiny bit of the brown. Just if you have any of the brown left, let's add a little bit of that. That's just going to gray it up a little. Oh, look at that. Oh, it's perfect. I'm perfect, guys. And I was just guessing. I told you, see, I used to be good at mixing color. Maybe I just have to be more intuitive about it. <laughs> okay, so this grays it up. All right. So now what we're going to do is in some areas, we're going to come in and we're going to add a little bit of shadow. So I'm just uh, brushing in here. Now, one of the things, um, all this is doing is just adding a little bit of depth and I'm not falling in any particular pattern because our snow banks are going to be different depending on where they are. Um, let's see. Something we are going to do is we are going to feather, which is that tickling I talked about earlier, the flirting with the canvas. We are going to do a little bit of that. But before we do, I need to get some color down. So we're doing that. Uh, let's see, we'll do a little shadow here. So already the picture is starting to come together pretty well. Now I always tell everyone, you know, don't judge your painting by your middle stages because it never looks as good as it does at, at the end. Um, I've got like some kind of snow bank or something here. Uh, but in this case, I think it's actually coming along quite nicely. That's what I, I intentionally picked it a little bit easier picture. Um, for this, for this class today. So not all of the pictures are going to look quite so great right at the right. I mean, I guess we're not at the beginning anymore, but halfway through. We're a little more than halfway through, I suppose. All right get a little bit of the gray in here. Little gray, little gray, little gray. Do, 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 do. Little gray, little gray. Hmm. 
I'm just now I'm just kind of painting some lines kind of in the background that indicate that there are ridges elsewhere. All right. Now, this is key. Rinse your brush really, really well. You don't want anything on it. And then we're going to dry it really, really well. Okay. This is the key to tickling or what can also be called feathering. So we want it to be pretty dry. Now we're going to come in right at the edges of the color that we just put on there, that, that dark color. And we're just very lightly, like I said, it's just kind of tickling the edges. Oh, that one was already dry. So um, we'll just have to fix that here in a minute. Maybe we don't. Maybe we don't have to fix it. Maybe it looks fine the way it is. Tickle the edges. We, we will see. Now, every once in a while when you're doing this feathering technique, you want to come over and just wipe your brush on your paper towel or towel or whatever it is you're using because um, you'll get a buildup of paint on there. And we, want it, we don't want the paint because then that'll start mixing colors. We don't want to mix colors. All we're doing is just lightly feathering the edge. If any of you have ever worked with Photoshop, this is uh, a technique that you do in Photoshop too when you do a selection. You can refine the edge by feathering and that's what it does is it just creates this kind of like little, little blend at the very outside. All right, so right here, I'm not like a super fan of that area. So what I'm gonna do, all I did was you can't even see it on my brush. That's how much I barely touched it, okay? So there's like a little tiny bit. I'm just going to come right at the edge. Okay, I'm going to clean my brush. Well, not clean it. I'm just getting, in, getting all the excess stuff off. And then I'm going to feather that that I just put on there. There we go. Okay. Loving it. <laughs> Beat the devil out of it. <laughs> All right. So now, um, let's see. I feel like the sky might be a little bit too bright. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create kind of a purple wash. So I'm going to take a little bit of that kind of bluish purple that we made earlier. I'm going to add a little red to it because I want it to have a little more of the purple flare. And I mean, look how very, very little. I'm just like touching the bottom of my uh, palette, like um, hardly anything. And then I'm going to put quite a bit of water in there. I need a little tiny bit more red. Quite a bit of water. Okay. This creates a wash. Now what we're going to do is we're going to actually wash over the entire sky. Including the yellow because it's a little brighter than I would like it to be. And this just tones everything down. So I always start up in the darkest part and then bring it down into the yellow. This is very early morning. Hence why our snow is so blue. The only problem with wash, I mean, I guess it's not necessarily a problem, um, is that you can see the edges of the brush strokes wherever you leave it. So what I do is let it dry a little bit and then I come back and uh, feather it after it's just a tiny bit more dry, like where it's damp rather than wet. Otherwise then you get like these weird places. I don't know if you guys can see that, but at the edge of your canvas where, you, where it's darker. So I'll feather that out here in just a bit, just a minute. Okay, so what I'm doing is I'm drying off my brush because there's hardly anything on there. Um, 
All right, what is next? What's next? So we need to do our trees. I feel like if you have any of that brown color left, I feel like we could use the brown. So I happen to have some brown left. So I think that's what we'll use to do trees. No sense in, you know, doing new, new paint. Um, there's, I feel like there's something else that's missing though. Maybe we'll do this. Let's do this. We're going to take a little bit of white. Remember how we were doing a little white, little blue, little white, little blue. Well, now we're going to do a little white, little yellow, little, little white, little yellow. And we are going to come right on the snow. We're on the snow, right at the horizon line. Yeah, I like that. What that does is it's going to create a little bit of a highlight. Well, that had a little bit more yellow than I like. So I'm bringing in more white. Because there will be a reflection from the sky on the snow. I do know that much about snow, y'all. There is a little bit of reflection. Speaking of light though, I don't know if anybody follows Neil deGrasse Tyson on Twitter. I do, because he's a super cool dude. But um, he's been talking nonstop lately about Beetlejuice and how Beetlejuice is getting dimmer. So if you don't know, Beetlejuice is a star that is in kind of the armpit of Orion, uh, the constellation Orion. And I guess it's getting dimmer now. It is a little over 600 light years away. So whatever we're seeing now actually happened 600 year, Earth years ago, right? But he keeps saying, don't panic. Much like Ford Prefect of Beetlejuice, you know, from the, of the Beetle, Beetlejuice um, galaxy. So <laughs> it's a little concerning that he keeps saying it over and over again, sometimes in capital letters, for us to not panic. Maybe we should be panicking. <laughs> like, why, why does he keep repeating that? Everything is fine. <laughs> is it though? Is it, Philip? <laughs> How do we know? I mean, I feel like this is like the only the super scientists who know what they're talking about know what's going on. I mean, I guess you don't have to be a super scientist to know what's going on. All right. So I did all of that and now I'm not entirely happy with how it looks. This happens. So I'm going to feather what I just did using this brush. So I cleaned it off, I dried it off, and now I'm just coming in and lightly touching everything right there at the edge, at the edge of the world. Okay, wiping it off. Okay, everything is fine. This, this is Neil deGrasse Tyson. I'm typing this on a computer with my human fingers. <laughs> Oh my goodness, you are funny, Philip. <laughs> but see, that's the thing is that according to uh, according to Douglas Adams, uh, an alien from Beetlejuice already has been here. So you know, and wasn't his planet blown up? I mean, wasn't that the whole thing, or or something like that? I don't know. It's been a really long time since I read Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Great books though, and I do reference them a lot, like 42, which I will be next year, this year, this year, in May, y'all, I'm gonna be 42. It's like the magic number. It's exciting. This is gonna be my year. It's like my coming out year. <laughs> You're gonna get to see the real me. Just kidding, this is the real me. 
Okay, so something is going on here that I'm not happy with, so I'm just gonna keep working with it because that's what I do. Just overwork it, you know? <laughs> and eventually it'll look fine. So now, because I've got a lot of yellow over here, I've got this kind of egg yolk yellow over here. It, to me, it looks like, I don't even know, like uh, deviled eggs. That's what it looks like. The real you is you. Oh, well, see, that's a good way to be. Always be genuine, you know? Now, actually, I've been listening to, um, oh, look. I just randomly got some yellow down in my painting. Um, I've been listening to this book called Best Self, which I really like. And uh, one of the things he talks about is how anytime we do something that's not authentic, you know, whether it's telling a white lie or, um, you know, comparing yourself to other people or, you know, I'm trying to think of another example. Um, just dishonesty in any way even if you're lying to yourself about something that's your ego talking you know that is that is not your authentic self it's not your true self that's your ego and if you can get past that then you are on your way to being your best self okay um so i my ego talks a lot so i'm, I'm we're gonna have to work on that i have to get a, a muzzle <laughs> Shut that thing up. <laughs> All right. I, I feel like I'm okay now. I feel like maybe I messed with it a little bit too much earlier, but now I've come back and unmessed with it, I guess. I kind of undid what I did a little. Because I didn't like, I did not like what was happening. I added probably more yellow than I needed to. So now I'm coming in and adding white. It needs to be watered down a lot more. But I met a man the other day at the store, and he, he said that that was his New Year's resolution was to be his best self. And that it's not really a New Year's resolution because he says that's what he always tries to do. And I think that's a really great mentality. You know, we should just always be trying to be our best self, and then we don't have to worry about New Year's resolutions. And then that entire conversation that we had in my very first stream is pointless. <laughs> It wasn't pointless. I think it's always important for us to be setting new goals for ourselves, right? Okay, I'm leaving it alone. I'm, I'm stopping touching the, uh, the snow. The snow is done. Um, okay, the trees. So now we have to do the trees. If you were in my tree class the other day, then maybe you remember that I talked a little bit about how the branches don't come up in the same place and they, they kind of go off and, you know, do whatever. So that's kind of the same thing we're going to be doing here is we're going to start. I'm going to put one right on the inside of the fence. So to the left of the fence and right near the horizon. This is a tree kind of in the distance. So I'm just going to come up now. I'm going to let my tree just kind of go off to the side and I am barely and I mean barely touching my canvas you you can see that line is very very thin like I'm just kind of I'm going side to side and um, just just letting it just letting it kind of drift where it wants to go so now oh, this wants to go this way so I'm gonna branch out here So I'm picking up a little paint. Now, I did not add any water to this. That's because I'm letting it do this dry brush effect. It also, the less water you have, it helps you control um, the stroke. Like it lets you control the pressure a little bit more because if there's water, it's gonna wanna go all over your canvas. So, all right. So I'm gonna have another, another little branch dude come up here. I do recommend everybody go out and talk to a tree. Bob Ross actually recommended that in one of his uh, streams. 
and I happen to catch that stream and I think you know if you talk to something even though I'm not a fan of anthropomorphizing non-humans um, anthropomorphize by the way if any of you I do have some younger listeners so I'm not gonna make you look that up it just means making something seem human you know giving it a human quality jealousy rage love things like that you know we, we don't know that animals and, and plants and fungi and those things we don't know if they feel those type of things so we can't you know it's we're just giving them human qualities but there is something to be said for doing that because when we make something, you know, we're, we're a very arrogant species generally. And so when we make it seem more human, like talking to it, it makes us care about it more. So I, I say, go talk to a tree, you know, become friends with a tree, get to know it, not just for art purposes, but you know, for the purposes of, I guess, humanizing it in a way and, you know, creating more love for it. Somebody told me today they read, uh, they read like a post that was, it said, if you like a flower, pick it. If you love a flower, water it. And I thought, that's pretty cool. I like that. I like it. Okay, so what I'm doing now is I'm, I'm just doing my little branches coming off. And like I said, they're not all... Um, right across from each other. I'm kind of, you know, catty cornering, cornering them up and down and just kind of going different directions. Some of them go down, some of them scoop up, some of them scoop up at more of an, an angle. If you follow me long enough, you will realize that I have a love for nature, um, which we are part of, by the way. Humans are nature. Um, but I have a love for it that uh, seems a little crazy sometimes. But that's okay. Somebody's got to, you know, love the planet. <laughs> I'm hoping it's more people than not, but... Wait till you guys hear some of my, my kooky thoughts on plants and how intelligent plants are. <laughs> I don't think they're kooky, but I'm pretty sure a lot of people do. But science backs me up, so, you know. All right, so um, I'm actually going to do one more crazy branch coming out this way. I really got off talking about uh, stuff other than painting, huh? That was like a big rabbit hole. Well, you know. That's what I do. <laughs> Maybe it's a painter thing because Bob does that. Bob Ross does some like crazy stories. I think there's even I think there's even an emoji for it. People think of plants as primitive compared to animals, even though they're more like contemporaries. Little, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> it's really true. And the thing about it is, is it, in my opinion, I think they're more evolved than we are. Uh, because think about it. You know, we do things like meditate and, you know, there's whole religions that the whole point is like escaping needs you know, Buddhism, that's the, the whole point of it is like to escape the idea of, uh, to escape loss and grief and, and, um, need, you know, so, I mean, plants still have needs like their basic survival needs, but think about it. You know, I'm a plant, the sun's over here. So I'm, oh, getting my sun, making my sugar, everything's nice. But then, you know, the sun is over here. Or maybe my my human owner moves me somewhere. So then I just, you know, grow this way so that I get closer to the sun, you know. Or I, I spread my roots out a certain way to where the water's coming from. You know, I, I just, it's how we aim to be. Like a lot of Eastern religions are very much about like just kind of going with what's going on around you and 
plants can do it. You found it. You found the emoji. Cool story, Bob. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Okay, so um, my tree's probably not as full as I would like it. Uh, maybe one more branch coming down here. But I think it's okay. Um, I'm going to give it a little bit stronger base, though. And because I'm giving it a stronger base, that means I need to make some of my branches a little bit thicker. So that's what I'm doing. Okay. That's good. That is good. All right. Um, so let's see. I want to do a couple more trees. You know what I forgot to do, guys? I forgot to feather my edges before they dried, so I bet it's too late. Sure is. Uh, okay. Only way to fix this, really... It's a little white, a little yellow. You go over it like that. And I know that looks crazy because now I've just got this big white spot up there, but I'm gonna feather it. And hope that lightens it up enough to where it's not too obvious. And I think it did. I think that worked. I've um, got a little on this side too, but it's not as bad. This side was worse. Okay. Yeah, there's actually an Italian scientist uh, who studies plants, and he talks about the intelligence of plants. And that, that might even be the name of his book, The Intelligence of Plants, something like that. Anyway, very cool. Plants have brains. Yes, they do. Plants feel feelings. Plants have, like... 20 senses we have five five we have five senses plants have 20 they can sense humidity and they can sense uh air pressure and all kinds of things so really who's the smart ones you know also plants are not destroying their environment and we are so <laughs> there's that okay so back to the trees talk to a tree see what they have to say Maybe they'll give you some insight. All right, we're gonna do some trees kind of beyond the horizon over here. So this, we're only seeing the top of them. So at this point, we, we're gonna come down rather than coming up from the, like we were coming up from the middle of the um, trunk. Now we're gonna actually come down from the sky. And I'm just doing really thin lines. If you guys haven't tuned out already because of my, my crazy talk, then you're true followers and I really appreciate you staying. <laughs> or maybe you're just like, just get to the painting already, lady. <laughs> okay. So I'm just doing some random branches again. I'm not trying to be too fancy not trying to be too precise just we're just giving it the illusion that there's a tree over here now you guys may or may not have decided to draw your um uh to to paint on your sides but i did so i'm gonna have to do a couple of trees over here just to give it some kind of inkling that there's something you know Something, something. And then now that I see that, I, there's like this whole area that I missed, but it's all right. So maybe I'm going to do a tree that's farther away. This is not in the reference painting. I'm adding this. I'm going to do... I'm just doing these a little closer together. enough that it looks like there's something over the horizon there. Okay. I think this is pretty good. All right. So there is one thing I want to do, and that's just because when I created this tree, now there's no shadow coming from the tree. So we need there to be a shadow. How we're going to create that is going to be a little bit of our dark blue with a little bit of our light blue. And I'm just mixing it with my paintbrush. I don't always mix with my paintbrush. But 
mostly because it can hurt your brushes, but a little tiny bit there is not a problem. And I'm just going to come right up behind this tree and just put a line there going right up against the and on the other side of the fence. So looking at this, let's see if there's anything else we need to add to this. I don't know. What do you guys think? I mean, do you see, uh, let's see what Philip has to say. Do you have, real quick, I want you guys to be thinking about looking at your painting or looking at my painting. Um, if you chose not to follow along just yet and see if there's anything that needs to be added. I do want there to be some more white on here. Like I feel like there's not enough white spots. So I'm going to be adding a little bit of that. But um, if there's anything else that I'm missing, let me know. All right, let's see chat. Most organisms don't change their environment as significantly as humans do. Very true. We have a huge impact. Uh, let's just say Earth didn't have any oxygen at all in its atmosphere a couple billion years. And there's a reason why there's so much oxygen. True. That is true. We can think, actually, I think it's mostly our algae friends we can think for that. I think algae provides like 50% of the world's oxygen or something crazy. Um, I mean, don't quote me on that because I'm not, I took an environmental biology class and I remember learning something about that, but I could be mistaken, but I feel like it was algae because algae is like this like miracle thing. It's really good for you. It, it can heal you. It can provide us energy from its byproducts. Um, it gives us oxygen. Algae should be your best friend <laughs> because it basically already is. You just didn't know it. All right, let's see. I am gonna add a little white. If anybody else doesn't have any opinions, then I'm just gonna go for it. I'm just mixing up some white and I'm gonna come out here. I'm gonna start at my, um, my horizon line because I don't want to paint over I want to paint over my shadow I just made I said time stakingly or painstakingly is that how it goes not time I don't know I don't even know anymore guys I'm just like making words up now okay man I feel like I've really been on my soapbox today <laughs> don't expect that to change this is my platform. People are listening to me. I'm gonna make my make my rage known. All right, so I'm just coming in here with white. Ah, yes, algae is our forgotten friend. Don't worry, as fossil fuels start to run out, it will not be forgotten. <laughs> it will not. We will start. It's expensive right now, but to to make fuel, but. We'll figure that out real fast. That's what we like to do. We like to wait until we absolutely have to do something. Okay. So what I'm doing right now is I'm just coming in with white and generally some of it I'm putting in a lot more than others, but I just want more pure white in here. I feel like snow, especially pristine snow, like in the countryside, untouched is going to have like this glistening effect, right? So. All right, we are almost done, guys. We are almost done, like literally... As soon as I finish painting this white stuff, we only have two more things we have to do. And those are very important things. Um, I said as soon as I finish this white stuff, snow. <laughs> you know that white stuff. Very descriptive, Sarah. Okay. I don't know. I'm feeling pretty good about this. Oh, 
okay, time, time taking, time taking. All right, so I'm taking a little bit of water. This is just to blend everything because I don't, I don't like the dry brushing effect. Sometimes the dry brushing effect works very well and sometimes it doesn't. Um, one of the things we're going to be doing is the critique. And so uh, normally I would talk about that in the, the critique, but since I, I'm catching it now, I'm gonna go ahead and fix it now rather than wait until you know somebody has something to say about it. Maybe that somebody's me. Maybe, just maybe. So what I'm doing is I'm just taking water and then just kind of blending. And all that does is just takes that dry brush effect out of there. Get out of there, dry brush effect. Get out of there. Okay. All right. I think there's something else too. I'm, I'm noticing on my stream screen that the quality, like what you guys can see, it's like a little, maybe it seems like a, maybe a little blurred from mine. So you guys are, I think that the painting is actually looks better in the stream screen than it does IRL, but um, we'll see. This is why I always recommend that you stand up and walk away from your painting because when you get too close to it and you're looking at it, like the whole time you're, you're, critiquing how it looks and and you're just too involved um so uh that could be what's happening here it could be i'm just too close to it so i just need to walk away i'm not going to do that right now because i want to get finished there's a couple things that we need to do now if like bob ross you can sign we need to sign our work so i like to sign in the right hand corner you can sign with a paintbrush um, and i'm going to go ahead and do that this time However, I buy paint pens. Uh, let me see, I'll go get one. Okay, so these I got from Michaels, but here, I'll put it under here. So this is Craft Smart, which I think, I don't actually know, but I, I, anyway, that's a brand, Craft Smart. But anyway, so it's a paint pen. And so you can sign with this. I don't know how dry everything is. Actually, everything's dry, so I might I might use the paint pen. If you were using the brush, um, you would just pick up a little bit of paint and then very carefully try to carve your name out. I like having my very precise signature that I worked so hard on. Um, paint pens, sometimes you need to push them down a little bit to like get the paint flowing. Now I'm using silver, so I just signed it in the bottom corner. You can see my signature right there. Okay, <coughs> now we're going to critique. So um, clean workspace, in the, in the effort of clean workspace, I am gonna tell you really quick how to clean everything efficiently. Some of the paint on here has dried already, so I'm gonna have to scrape that. So I recommend, um, Sometimes you can find little like crocheted um, scrub, like scrubbies that, that work really well. They're kind of made out of, um, I don't know, I guess it's a plastic. So there's either those or like a, a sponge has like the rough side on the other side. You can work at that. Sometimes I'll just let them soak for a little bit and then use the rough side. Acrylic paint is okay to put down the drain unless... I don't know in California if that's true because California has rules that are different than the rest of the planet, but in most places, it's okay to put acrylic paint down the drain. There are other painting things you cannot, but that should not be a problem. Um, okay, brushes. Let's see, uh, you might be able to zoom in the footage a little bit more if you want a clearer image. Oh yeah, well, and this camera, this is my new camera, and it's the one that's looking down is my new one. And it's pretty fancy, but I haven't figured out how to use it yet. So <laughs> we'll, we'll, um, we'll just leave it for now like it is. And uh, when I go back and watch the video, I'll be able to tell like what changes I need to make. So 
All right, so cleaning, thank you for your input though, I appreciate that. Cleaning your brush, here's what you do. So you put a little bit of soap right in the middle of your hands, all right? Let's say your water's turned on already. You've got a little soap in the middle of your hands. You take your brush and you move it around like you're painting circles in your hand and that like gets the uh, soap up into the brush, okay? Then you hold it while you're still circling it, you hold it under the water until it goes clear. Okay, now, you may need to do that more than one time. That is the correct way to paint your brush, okay? Uh, so, hold it in your, the palm of your hand, put it in circles. Same thing with your smaller brushes, it's the same exact thing. All right, that's the correct way to clean your brush. You don't want to um, ruin the bristles or anything like that, so that is like the proper way. When you are drying your brush, you want to, you can dry it off with your, with a paper towel, you know, and then you want to just kind of shape the brush with your fingers the way it's supposed to look. The best way to dry your brushes is by, I'm going to pretend this is the surface of my um, countertop, like right here. You want to dry them with their, with them being off the side of the counter. You can... I really, really don't recommend it. You can put them in a cup sitting up like this, but the reason I don't recommend it is if there is even a little bit of paint left in there, what happens is that gets down into this area and it loosens your brushes because it'll dry around it. it. It loosens the bristles, excuse me, and those bristles will come out. And this is part of brush care. So clean in a circular motion, let it, let it dry flat off the side of your countertop, okay? like that. Now, um, never, ever, 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 ever leave your brushes sitting like this up and down, whether it's in water or, you know, sitting up against something, anything that will ruin your, your brushes, like a hundred percent ruin them. They'll, they'll get bent that way and you won't be able to bend them back. So there we go. Done on brush cleaning. Okay. So let's take a look at this. I'm going to do my critique. Now I'm opening Discord because I would like, if anybody has followed along with me, um, there's the reference image in there. So I am going to, let's see, first, first and foremost, if you came in later, I'm going to reshare Discord with everybody. Okay. So here is the Discord server. If you don't have Discord, I highly recommend you get it as an app. It's a free app. Um, you can join this server. If you click on the link, it will take you to the server and you can sign up. Um, I think you can link your Twitch account and stuff like that. But for now, the main reason why I want you to join the server is because um, you can upload pictures here. And so we can do an actual critique on the Discord server. This was Philip's idea, so thank you, Philip, for that. Um, and I somehow miraculously managed to figure out how to do it. All right, so um, I don't know what the best thing would be here if I take a screenshot and not inter entirely sure how to do that. Let's see. I'm using OBS now. Does anybody use OBS? If you do, is there an easy way to take a screenshot? Anybody? <laughs> I'm trying to get the white around there. Okay, let's see. I'm looking. File. So we're only a little bit over time, which is good. Getting better, y'all. And when I say overtime, generally the class is going to be two hours, but you know, we could, especially since there's chat and things like that, it could go on a little longer, which is fine. All right, so what I'm trying to figure out right now is screenshotting, but in the meantime, I will go ahead and critique. I just wanted to put it up against the reference photo so you guys could see it, but I'll go ahead and critique it the way it is. So, 
The way my critiques run, if you haven't been in my class before, is that um, I want you to say one thing that you think is very effective, not necessarily what you like, but what you think is effective in the painting, like what's really making the painting work. And then um, the second thing I want you to do is talk about what's not effective and like what could be changed or what could be added to make the painting more effective. All right, so that is it. There is no bad mouthing. That's my rule number three. I didn't even talk about my rules today, but rule number three is no bad mouthing the art or the artist, including yourself. So um, you don't get to say that it's a terrible painting or anything like that. That is not part of the critique. That is not helpful. Um, what is helpful is saying what's working because that's something you would want to continue doing in future paintings and then what's not working. Um, so you know what to stop or what to change. All right, so continuing. So I'm looking at mine. I really, really feel like my sky is effective. I like that I added the wash later um, I, because I think that really took, it muted it down a little bit so it wasn't so bright. So I think that was very effective. Um, I think my fence is pretty effective. You know, I do see a little part right here that I'm going to fix right now just because I can. Um, where the snow like came up over the fence, which I guess there would probably be snow on the fence. I didn't even think about that. See, this is what happens when you, you have a painting teacher that's not from a snowy area. Or an area that even gets snow. I mean, I live in Florida now, guys. No snow. No snow. Um, also, I just realized that we really didn't do any highlights. So I'm just going to add that. So I'm just adding just a, a tiny bit of white. A little bit of white and a little bit of brown. Man. I like skipped a whole step there. Glad we caught this in critique, see? Critique is good for something. <laughs> Besides just, you know, making you feel good as an artist. Helping you grow as an artist. Okay, well, that's good enough. Okay. So you like the main tree, huh? Okay, so I've, I've got to vote the, for the main tree. So there's an image capture you can use directly. Show an image that you've downloaded onto your computer. Okay, well, I can figure that out maybe a different time. I think today we'll, we will just do um, the critique from here. So what I said was effective. Apparently I've got to vote for the tree, this main tree being effective. So thank you for that. Um, I also feel that the sky is very effective. I like the curve of my fence. I think that that is pretty good at, at um, showing the space. Um, remember how we talked about space kind of at the beginning and how uh, we want it to look 3D so we need it to curve around a certain way. I think I did a good job with that. Now, what I don't think is as effective is um, the snow. And it's hard for me to get a little bit more specific than that. I'm going to try for you guys, for your sake. Um, but there's something about it that's not sitting right with me. And I don't know if it's because I maybe didn't blend things like I should blend the colors, the different blues that we put on there. Maybe I, it didn't blend. Maybe if I step away from it. You know what? I'm going to do it, okay? I'm going to do it. You guys, give me just a second. I'm just getting up and walking away. Okay. Do, 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 do. I'm walking away. And then I'm going to come back. Okay. I'm back. Oh, well. No. I'm still not a fan. But I think it has more to do with the blending. I think that if I blended it a little bit more, that it, it might be more effective. So... That's a note for next time. Now I could go in and fix it right now. I'm not going to. Um, I'm, I'm, we're getting to the end of the stream, so I'm not gonna do that. But I do think that that is something that would make it more effective if I blend it a little bit more um, 
basically between the white and the dark. Even if it was just slight blending, just that little feathering that we did in some of the other parts, I think that would be very effective. So that is mine. If anybody has joined the Discord server and would like to upload something, um, you can also upload any other artwork. If anybody's been working on anything else during this stream that does not have to be this particular painting, um, I would love to see that. I would love to see what you've been working on. And the, the same rules apply, you know, critique yourself in the same way. So has anybody been working on anything or is, is has everybody just kind of been watching today? I shall see. I'm waiting with bated breath. I do have one non-related question. Well, you know what? I'll save that for offline. How about that? Because it has to do with a different stream. So, <laughs> all right. It looks like maybe nobody is sharing today, which is fine. Um, does anybody have any feedback that they would like to give? Like Philip already said something about uh, the, tr the main tree, but is there anybody else that has feedback for either my technique, um, the way it looks, that you know maybe something's not effective. Uh, hey, welcome. Um, okay, or even feedback for me as the teacher, like maybe there's something that I didn't explain well, or I explained really well, or uh, maybe you, I could have gone into more depth. Um, who knows? Anything, any kind of feedback. We love feedback here. That's the great thing about being an artist. We get lots and lots of feedback and we learn to love it, whether we want to or not. <laughs> All right, looks like most people have been watching. That's good. Well, I tell you what, guys, it seems like I feel like this has been a really great stream. Overall, I'm generally happy with um, the outcome. And I want to thank everybody for coming. And uh, hopefully you will go out and talk to a tree today. If it's too cold, you don't have to. Maybe just from your window. Just be like, hey, tree, what's up? Anyway, thank you very much for coming out, guys.